it so hard for an end user to know whether an ISP is d discriminating against their traffic? Well, it's actually hard in general for anybody, including researchers and the network operators themselves, to understand where degradations in path in, in traffic being transferred over paths may be happening. It could be happening at the interconnection points, within networks, at the endpoints, at the server, at caches. It's a, it's a complicated place and it's super hard to measure, not least of which because there's different administrative organizations controlling different parts of the path. And often, those organizations are competing. So they're not inclined to share data with each other, even if they have data about what has happening to traffic within that segment of the network. So that's a hard, a hard proposition no matter who you are. And it's particularly hard for end users who frankly aren't that interested. They just want the thing to work. We talked earlier about one of the reasons you want to you need to look at the internet as a whole rather than just network neutrality is that network neutrality is sort of a, it's an amorphous concept and it's not tied to a specific consumer goal necessarily. So let's talk about a consumer goal and then we can easily, more easily understand why measurement is so important to that goal. Let's say the goal is you want to watch a video, you want to stream a video, and you want to make sure that you're not, the, the video that you want to watch isn't being discriminated against, that is, your access provider happens to own interest in another video content provider, and if you watch that one, it would be better performance. But if you watch this one, it would be worse performance. How do you know? How do you know unless you like set up an experiment and try to watch both at the same time, and sometimes it's really hard to tell because the, the, the endpoints of the video application, your, your side and the other side, can do some pretty intelligent coding to make it such that even if there were some discrimination, or some, let's say, differentiated transfer of the data, like one is faster than the other, you wouldn't notice it because your software is really good at sort of masking that and buffering things and making sure that by the time it hits your eyeball, you're not noticing any, any difference. So it's a really subtle thing to try to measure, which begs, which begs the question, why, why does it matter? If indeed discrimination can happen and some discrimination you want to happen, like you want to make sure that malicious traffic isn't sent to you, traffic with security um, vulnerabilities isn't sent to you, um, then how do you know which kind of discrimination is good and which kind of discrimination is bad? And one answer is, well, it depends whether the consumer actually experiences some harm. And how do you measure that? Because even measuring the network would might give you some evidence that the consumer is experiencing harm, but it wouldn't be proof necessarily. Now, you know, we can't go inside everybody's home and say, okay, what is, how is your experience watching that video? So we have to go with some measurable, with measurable methods of gaining evidence that the consumers are likely to be harmed. And one of those is you can look for evidence of congestion at different points in the network.